Today, we will be looking at some real life demonic possessions caught on camera. All the footage is said to be real, even some coming from famous paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren themselves. Viewer discretion is advised as some of the possessions are quite gruesome and terrifying. You have been warned. Starting off this countdown, we have Maurice. Now, if you have seen the movie Nun, then this is the real life case that that movie was based off of. Maurice, or Frenchy Thoreau was a hardworking farmer that ended up getting diabolically possessed. This occurred in 1985. It started with blood randomly pouring from his nose, or his eyes and his mouth, and he didn't know what was causing it. He also developed super strength and could randomly understand and speak Latin. At first, he went to a police officer for help, and then a priest, and then finally he went to Ed and Lorraine Warren. Now apparently, he went through a number of exorcisms. According to the Warrens, during the exorcisms, Frenchie's head would split open, boils would appear on his skin, and crosses would randomly appear all over his body. In fact, this was all caught on film. Take a look. <laughs> Like the Warren said, he would often get random cuts on his forehead and scalp that would split open and bleed during the exorcisms. The demon that was inside of Frenchie put a huge fight up against the Warrens. That footage is just absolutely traumatizing. In our ninth spot today, we have the exorcism of Gina. In 1990, a teenager from Florida by the name of Gina underwent an exorcism. In fact, her exorcism was broadcast on ABC network for millions of people to watch. In the end, 29 million people turned into this exorcism. During the exorcism, Gina was strapped to a chair and tried to fight back a number of times. <laughs> God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. She would bark at the priest and yell out when the priest put the cross on her forehead. I send your Holy Spirit into our hearts and our lives, Lord. Stay away from me. Send your Holy Spirit into our lives, Lord. Oh God. Lord Jesus Christ, our living God. Stay away! In the end, it was found that she was being possessed by a number of demonic spirits, including one named Zion and another one named Minga. God have pity on us and bless us. May let his face shine I upon us. I like you! And may your way be known upon you. you experience the fires of hell. Ugh. Zion, leave now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command any other spirits that are present in Gina to speak out now and reveal themselves. The cross compels you. Moving on at number eight, we have the exorcism of Laura. This is a pretty fairly recent case of possession. It occurred in 2015. Back in 2015, a woman named Laura from Argentina became possessed. During the exorcism, we can see Laura writhing in pain and contorting her body. She also screams a number of profanities while she starts banging her head. The exorcism finally comes to an end when she begins crying and then falls backwards exhausted. She was finally free from all the demons that were possessing her. <laughs> In our seventh spot today, we have the lost tapes. Now, I covered this in my other video. If you haven't seen it already, you can watch it here, but here's just a little refresher. So in 1973, this footage was supposedly found in the attic of a newly purchased home in Iowa. The footage is very disturbing and it depicts a real possession of an unknown male. It's scary because paranormal things start happening as the person is near this possessed person, like the door opens by itself. And the man is clearly in pain. It's very gruesome to watch because he starts bleeding, wounds start opening up on his stomach, and it's very, very dark. <laughs> In our sixth spot today, we have the exorcism of Rosa. In 2015, a man named Father Amorth 
took on the possession case of a woman named Rosa. Rosa was in her late 30s when weird things started happening, things out of her control. Family noticed that she was acting different and she would have these random outbursts. Things got so bad that her family took her to go see the father. He ended up performing nine or more exorcisms on her. During the exorcisms, Rosa's body would throb, she would thrash violently, she would foam from the mouth, and she would try to attack the bystanders. She would even talk to the father in Latin when she didn't even speak the language. In the end, the exorcism was successful and Father Amorth determined the cause of the possession was due to a curse that her brother's girlfriend put on her. Mm -mm. Apparently, both her brother and the girlfriend were members of a demonic cult and the girlfriend was a witch. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with Annalise. The exorcism of Annalise Mikkel is a pretty famous one. Annalise was a German Catholic woman that was said to be possessed by five different demons. It all started one day when she blacked out at school and began walking around all days. She didn't remember anything and people that saw her said that she was in a trance-like state. Soon she would black out more and more often. And then things started to get way worse. She started to convulse and hallucinate randomly. Eventually, she claimed that she saw the face of the devil and could hear demons whispering in her ears. In the end, she underwent 67 exorcisms, some lasting up to four hours. Now, this was a recording taken during one of Annalise's exorcisms, and it's horrifying. Yeah, yeah, being on. She literally sounds like a demon. She has this deep, raspy growl, and it's truly, truly terrifying. In our fourth spot today, we have the Buddhist exorcism. <laughs> What you just saw is real footage of Ed and Lorraine Warren conducting an exorcism in Japan. So in the early 2000s, the Warrens took a trip to Japan to check out haunted tunnels. Apparently a number of people have died in these tunnels and that's why it's haunted. But while they were there, they were contacted to perform a Buddhist exorcism on a woman named Teresa. In the clip I'm about to show you, Lorraine is trying to reach out to Teresa and get her to fight back against the demon that is possessing her. Go to the light, Teresa. Go to the light. Your family is waiting. Now, not only is that actual footage of someone that is possessed, but you can also hear the demon in her voice reaching out to talk to Lorraine. Now, what's scary is that this case was kind of hidden from the public. If you Google it, you'll barely find any information on it. We truly don't know if the demon was successfully exercised from her or what. But here's the thing. After this trip to Japan, Ed got really sick and his health started to decline. So it's thought that the demon that was haunting this girl had something to do with it. Maybe it latched onto him. Coming in at number three, we have Daniel the Demon. Now this case will forever haunt me because it is so scary. On August 15th of 2016, Austin Harrow left his house trying to get away from a demon named Daniel. That's when he somehow ended up in a couple's garage and later he woke up to dead bodies beside him. Austin had killed the couple and tried to eat their faces. But according to Austin, he was just trying to flee from this demon. That's all he remembers, fleeing from the demon, being in the garage, and then hearing screams. He said he grabbed a machete he found in the garage, but doesn't know why he killed her and her husband. When police found Austin, it took a number of deputies, stun guns, and bites from a police dog to get him off of the couple. Reports show that Austin was not on any drugs at the time of the incident. And his mom claims that earlier that day, she walked in on Austin trying to drink oil and he was unaware of what he was doing. So this seems to be another real case of demonic possession. In our second spot today, we have Beelzebub. Here's another case in which Lorraine Warren and her son-in-law, Tony Spira, were called to exercise a demon from someone. The man was possessed by Beelzebub himself. In Christian texts, the name Beelzebub is often associated with the devil himself. They would alternate between using this name and Satan. He is considered one of the seven princes of hell and he is associated with the sin of gluttony. Here is a video of this possession. This is the power, Jesus Christ. Okay? You hear me? What is your name? Jesus Christ commands you to answer that question. 
What is your what name? What is your name? Beelzebub? Is that what you're saying? Beelzebub? That's not all though. He went on to say that there were at least four other demons possessing him, not just Beelzebub. Who else? What other entity is inside you? God is commanding you. Abaddon. Abaddon. Okay, who else? They then asked the demons why they were possessing this man, and he replied with, power. Why are you there with Roberto? And in our number one spot today, we have Anna Eklund. This is another very famous exorcism case. Anna Eklund was an American woman who in 1928 became possessed and underwent a number of exorcisms. During her exorcisms, things would happen like she would hiss or howl like an animal. She would flow in mid-air. And whenever holy water touched her skin, it would burn her skin right off. She would also climb up her bedroom walls and speak in tongues. This started when she was only 14 years old, and ever since then, it kept getting worse and worse. The first exorcism took place when she was only 14, and it was successful, but only for a short period of time, because then she became possessed again. In 1928, Anna underwent 30 exorcisms and all of them had failed. So they decided to send her to St. Joseph's Church in Iowa to see if they could get the demons out of her. While she was there, she apparently would throw up 20 to 30 times a day and the throw up reeked. It was so bad that the nuns had to take 15 minute shifts with her or else they would all fall ill. In the end, it was discovered that Anna got possessed due to a curse that her father and her aunt put on her. Her aunt was apparently a witch that mixed potions in with her food, and that's why she became possessed. All right, guys, that's all for today's video. I hope you liked it. If you did, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. And now we're moving on to our comment shout out portion. I'll be shouting out comments from one of my latest videos, Most Unsettling Unsolved Mysteries. Robbie Allen 6522 commented, you've been working hard lately. I've seen you put up a lot of new content recently and we love it. Yes, last week I posted a video a day. It's been crazy, like long form video and I'm trying to post every single day except for the weekends, so stay tuned. Matt Cooper 8010 commented, love your videos, Lindsay. Always look forward to the new ones. Aw, thanks, Matt Cooper. Like I said, posting every day, so stay tuned. Angelisa Flores 6134 commented, I just subscribed to your channel not that long ago, but I already love all your videos. Thank you so much, Jalisa. Uh, means a lot to me and welcome any new subscribers. Road to 100K. All right, guys, that's all the comments I'm shouting out for today's video. If you wanna be featured in my next comment shout out, then make sure you comment something down below. And while you're down there, smash that like button, obviously subscribe to my channel. I've been your host, Lindsay Ivan. Stick around for some bloopers if there is any, and I'll show you when I show y'all. Bye. What the fuck? that was scary. <sighs> something moved over there. Ah. Oh my god, no, I'm filming.